Hello, in this video I would like to talk about uh, independent events. Remember that conditional probability of A given B uh, is given by probability of A and B divided by probability of B. So this is, as we have seen before, probability of A given that we know event B has already occurred. Now, uh, let me ask you a quick question. So here is an example. I toss a coin. And let A be the event of observing heads. And let B be the event that it rains tomorrow. And my question is, what is probability of A given B? Well, you probably answer that it looks like these two events are not related, right? There is no dependence between them. The fact that it rains tomorrow does not have anything to do with the you know, result of my coin toss. So you might argue that probability of A given B it must be equal to probability of A. In other words, this additional information does not change the probability of A. And you're absolutely right. In fact, what you are saying here is that A and B are two independent events. So A and B are independent. So uh, we say that two events are independent if, uh, you know, if we know one of them ha has occurred, uh, the probability of the other one does not change. So in, the, in other words, the conditional probability of A given B is the same as probability, uh, probability of A. And similarly, uh, we can say that pro conditional probability of B given A is equal to probability of B. Um, and you can easily see that these two are equivalent. Um, now, let's see, let's play with this a little bit. Probability of A and given B, as we have seen, is probability of A and B, or A intersection with B, divided by probability of B. And if to two events are independent, then this must be equal to probability of A, which uh, results in probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. So in fact, this is the definition of two independent events. We say that two events are independent if this condition is satisfied. So two events A and B are independent if we have probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. So sometimes it is very easy to argue that two events are independent because there is no physical interaction between them, similar to the, you know, the example that we have. Tossing a coin, it's easy to argue that it must be independent of the fact that it rains or it doesn't rain tomorrow. In other situations, it is not that easy. We need to really check uh, if this equation holds. We need to do the math. Uh, let's look at an example here. So the example says, uh, I roll a die and observe the outcome, uh, which is the number x. x is a number between 1 and 6. Let a be the event that x is an uh, even number, and let b be the event that x is larger than 4. The question is, are a and b independent? So I suggest that you solve this problem before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's solve this. Uh, in this uh, question, our sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. And the event A uh, is the event that the outcome is an even number, so it's 2, 4, and 6. And event B, um, so what's the probability of A, by the way? Probability of A is uh, the number of elements in A, 3 over 6, because you know, all the outcomes are equally likely, so it's 1 over 2. So event B is uh, the, the event that X is larger than 4, so it's 5 and 6. There are two elements in B, so probability of B is 2 over 6, which is... 1 over 3. Now, what is A and B? A intersection with B. The event A intersection with B, if we look at the sets, we see that the only common element is the element 6. So, uh, A and B is just the event that the outcome is 6. So, what is probability of A and B is equal to 1 over 6, because there is only one outcome here. So, we can easily check that this is equal to probability of A times probability of B. Probability of A was one half, probability of B was one third. So in fact, these two events are independent. So uh, although they are, uh, re these two events, both of them are related to the number X, but they are independent. And the way to find that they're independent is just to do the, do the math. Check whether this probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. So that was an example in which it wasn't very obvious at the beginning that the two events are in fact independent. So we can extend the concept of independence to three or more events. In particular, if I have three events, A and B and C, we say, we say that they are independent if all of these conditions hold. In other words, uh, A and B are independent, A and C are independent, 
B and C are independent, and also we have probability of A and B and C is equal to probability of A times probability of B times probability of C. Um, you might think that, well, if these three uh, conditions hold, when they, then they are independent, it's sufficient, but it, that is not the case. In fact, you can have examples in which the events are pairwise inter independent, but they are not independent. Um, here's an example. Uh, I toss two coins, coin one and coin two, let's call them coin one and coin, coin two. Let A be the event uh, that the outcome of the coin one is equal to heads, so, and let B be the event that coin two is equal to uh, heads, and let C be the event that uh, the outcome of coin one is equal to the outcome of coin two. So C happens if the outcome is heads, heads, or tail, tails. And my question for you is that to show A and B and C are pairwise independent, but probability of A uh, and B and C is not equal to probability of A times probability of B times probability of C. So I suggest that you solve this problem before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's uh, solve this. So I have two coins, coin one, coin two. Uh, here are all possible outcome, heads, 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 tails, tails, uh, heads, tails, tails. Okay, so event A is the event that coin 1 results in heads. So event A is uh, basically consists of heads, heads, and heads, tails. Event B is the outcome that coin 2 uh, results in heads. So it's heads, heads, uh, and tail heads. And event C is basically uh, heads, heads, and tails, tails. So, well, First of all, you can because these are two different coins. Clearly, uh, A and B are independent, and you can check the formula as well. So, probability of A and B, you know, A and B, the only element that is common is heads and heads, is equal to uh, you know one out of four possibilities. So, one over fourth. What is probability of A? Probability of A is uh, basically there are two outcomes in A, and the sample space has four elements, so it's two over four. And what is probability of B? That's also 2 over 4, or 1 over 2. And clearly this you know, holds. 1 half times 1 half is equal to 1 fourth. And you can check the rest, you know. So A and B are independent. You can check that A and C are independent. Similarly, just check the formula probability of A and C is equal to probability of uh, A times probability of C. And you can check that uh, B and C also are independent. But what is uh, A intersection with B intersection with C. Is there an element that is common in all of them? Well, there is only one element that is common in all of them. That's heads, heads, right? So uh, this this set is just heads and heads. So the probability of A and B and C is equal to one out of, again, the sample space, uh, there are four possible outcomes, so one over four. Now, what is probability of A? Uh, is this equal to probability of A times probability of B? times probability of C. Well, probability of A is one half, probability of B is one half, and probability of C is also one half. Again, because there are two outcomes in A and there are four uh, possible outcomes in the sample space, so what, two over four is one half and so on. So of course, this is not equal. So this is not equal. So uh, as we see, A and B and C are not independent. independent. Although, a and B are independent, B and C are independent, and A and C are independent. And you can, you know, extend the definition to four or five uh, events. The, the issue is that, you know, the, the idea is that all possible combinations of events that you get, the probability of their intersection must be the multiplication of probabilities. In that case, you can uh, say that the events are independent. So the fundamental issue here is that you know, the, the lesson in this video is that if events A and B and C are independent, uh, we, you know, we can say that probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B, and probability of A and B and C is equal to probability of A times probability of B times probability of C. So in other words, uh, independence means we can come uh, multiply, multiply the probability of um, intersections. OK, so let's look at an example. Uh, I touched the coin three times, and the question is, what's the probability of uh, that I observe three heads? And the second question is, what is the probability that I observe two heads and one tail? And, you know, the order doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, let's solve this problem. 
uh, you know the issue is that I can write probability of heads and heads and heads so this is a, just a simplified notation uh, that means that the first one is heads the second uh, one is heads and the third one is heads now we use the independence here because uh, you know the assumption here is that the coin tosses are independent so this is equal to probability that the first one is heads times probability that the second one is heads times probability that, that the third one is heads and this is uh, it's called one half times one half times one half which is one over eight of course you, what you can do you can say that you know you write the whole sample space uh, if you write the whole sample space you know there are all possible outcomes uh, you will see that there are eight possible outcomes and then you see, will see that we are interested in one of them, so the probability is 1 over 8. So you will get the same answer uh, because all of the outcomes are equally likely. But, you know, this is just straightforward using the definition of independence. Now, the second one says that I observe, what is the probability that they observe two heads and one tails? Now, what are the, what, what is, let's call this event A. Event A is, well, two heads, so it could be heads, heads, and tails. It could be heads, tails, and heads and it could be tails, heads, and heads. So the probability of A is probability, well, there are, uh, again, this is a finite uh, sample space, so we can say this is probability of the first element plus probability of second outcome plus probability of the third outcome, right? Uh, and then we use the independence, probability of heads, heads, tails is equal to probability of heads, the first one heads, the second one heads, and the third one tails, Plus, so this probability is the, again, I'm using just independence here. Probability of T times probability of heads plus probability of tails prob times probability of heads times probability of heads. And this is equal to, again, all of these probabilities are one half. So one half times one half times one half plus, again, one half times one half times one half plus one half times one half times one half. So all of them are one eighth, and there is three of them, so the answer is three over eight.